Every day, without really thinking about it, we trust numbers to tell us how hot or cold the world is. We glance at a weather app, turn a thermostat, or read a recipe, and instantly understand what those numbers mean for our comfort, safety, or dinner plans. But here's the strange part. Depending on where you live or what you're doing, the same temperature can be written in completely different ways. Water freezes at 32 in one system, at zero in another, and at 273.15 in a third. None of these numbers are wrong. They're just telling the same story using different languages. Today, we're diving into Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin to uncover where they came from, why they exist side by side, and how each one quietly shapes the modern world. Right here on History of Simple Things. Fahrenheit is often criticized for being confusing, but when it was created in the early 1700s by German physicist Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit, it was actually designed to make everyday life easier. Fahrenheit wanted a scale that avoided negative numbers in normal weather conditions, which were inconvenient for early thermometers. He based his zero point on a mixture of ice, water, and salt one of the coldest stable temperatures he could reproduce in a lab. The upper end of his scale was roughly based on human body temperature, which he originally set at 96 degrees. While the exact reference points were later adjusted, the spirit of Fahrenheit remained the same, a temperature scale finely tuned to how humans experience the world. That's why weather in Fahrenheit often feels more precise. A change of a few degrees actually reflects noticeable differences in comfort, making it popular in places like the United States for daily forecasts and home heating. Celsius came along a few decades later and took a very different approach. Developed in 1742 by Swedish astronomer Anders Celsius, this scale was designed around something universal and easy to observe, water. On the Celsius scale, water freezes at zero degrees and boils at 100 degrees under normal atmospheric pressure. That simple, clean structure made Celsius incredibly appealing to scientists and educators. Interestingly, Celsius originally proposed the scale upside down, with boiling at zero and freezing at 100. But it was later reversed to the form we know today. Celsius spread quickly across Europe, and eventually became the standard for most of the world, especially as science and international communication expanded. Its logical spacing and natural reference points make it intuitive once you're familiar with it, which is why it dominates weather reports, cooking instructions, and classroom lessons in most countries today. Kelvin feels different because it is different. Unlike Fahrenheit and Celsius, Kelvin isn't designed around human comfort or everyday experiences. It's designed around physics itself. Introduced in the mid-1800s by physicist William Thomson, later known as Lord Kelvin, this scale starts at absolute zero. Absolute zero, measured as zero Kelvin, represents the theoretical point where all molecular motion stops. There are no negative values on the Kelvin scale because in physics, you can't have less than zero thermal energy. What makes Kelvin especially useful is that its unit size is identical to Celsius. The only difference is the starting point. Water still freezes at 273.15 Kelvin and boils at 373.15 Kelvin. This makes Kelvin incredibly powerful for scientific equations, especially in thermodynamics, chemistry, and astronomy, where precise energy relationships matter far more than how hot something feels to human skin. If Celsius is logical and Kelvin is scientifically perfect, you might wonder why Fahrenheit is still around at all. The answer is history and habit. Temperature scales became popular long before global standardization existed. 
Countries adopted the systems that arrived first or worked best for their needs at the time. By the time international science organizations pushed for Celsius and Kelvin, Fahrenheit was already deeply embedded in daily life in some regions. Changing a temperature scale isn't just about switching numbers, it means rewriting building codes, retraining professionals, and reshaping cultural instincts. Each system survived because it excelled in its own context. Fahrenheit for daily comfort, Celsius for practical measurement, and Kelvin for pure science. Today, these three temperature scales coexist, each quietly dominating its own territory. Fahrenheit thrives in weather forecasts, home thermostats, and everyday conversation in a few countries because it communicates comfort levels with fine detail. Celsius rules the global stage, used in weather reports, medicine, food labeling, and education across most of the world. Kelvin lives almost entirely behind the scenes, powering scientific research, engineering calculations, and space exploration. When scientists calculate how stars burn, gases expand, or materials behave near extreme temperatures, Kelvin is the language they rely on. None of these systems is better in every situation. They're tools, and each one was built for a specific job. In the end, Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin aren't rivals competing for dominance. They're translators telling the same story from different perspectives. One speaks to how humans feel the weather, another explains how nature behaves, and the third describes how energy itself works at the most fundamental level. The next time you hear a temperature quoted in a system you don't normally use, it's worth remembering that you're not seeing a contradiction. You're seeing a different lens. And just like any good tool, the best temperature scale is the one that fits the moment you're trying to understand. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.